so excited know, about right? this first Legend. guest. I know. Our first guest is a rock and roll hall of famer who made history with one of the most influential music groups of all time. And these days, he's using his celebrity and his platform to tackle a social issue very close to his heart. That's right. Joining us to discuss his charity for disadvantaged foster kids, the Felix Organization, his hip-hop legend <laughs> and philanthropist, Daryl McDaniels, a.k.a. DMC of Run DMC. Welcome to well, Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> you hear that, baby? That's DMC talking to you. Thanks. Yeah. So it's gonna come out rapping. I'm like, what this way? Rapping and rocking. It's chicken. Come on, baby. <laughs> the kids love that song too. Yeah, they do. So yeah. catchy. Oh, good. I'll, yeah. I'll put that in my lullaby remix. Yeah, All yeah, right. Kids love it. <laughs> okay, let's clear something up. What mm -hmm. does DMC stand for officially? Well, officially, mm -hmm. is the initials of my name. T okay. from Daryl, MC from McDaniel's, okay. but. T's for doing it all of the time. M's for the rhymes that are all mine. C's for cool, cool as can be. And I wear these contacts now so I can see. Oh, oh, I used to wear the glasses. Yeah, I used to wear the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's the initials on my yeah. name, Mom. Um, originally, it meant a lot of things. Doing mine's cool, devastated my controller, Darryl McDaniels. But most recently, I found out that DMC means Deliver my children. Deliver Ooh. my children. Yeah. Okay. And which brings us to your organization to help children. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You're um, really the co-founder of the Felix uh, organization. organization to help children in the foster right. care system. But why did you see that there was a need for this type of organization? Well, um, several years ago, at the age of 35, um, after doing everything that I did at Run DMC, something crazy happened. What happened? Jam Master J got shot and killed. Oh, yes, my yes. father died. Byford McDaniel, son of Byford, brother of Al. Banners my mother, runs my pal. Byford passed away. And then um, I went through this severe depression, and there was this hole in me. And I got to the point where I was a suicidal, metaphysical, spiritual, alcoholic wreck, because there was this hole in me, and I was trying to fill it with the Bible, and with the Koran, and with, with the Buddha book in Asia, and then alcohol became my best friend. But you were but the what? Huh. I was a metaphysical, metaphysical suicidal, suicidal, alcoholic, spiritual wreck. And the reason why I say it like that is, um, you know, I got really depressed and people was telling me, yo, there's this dude called Deepak Chopra. Mm. So I went to the borders and Barnes and Noble brought all these books and I got into metaphysics. And basically what happened, it was this void in me and um, mm. it was very uncomfortable. And it got to the point where I asked myself, am I here just to be DMC? the king of rock. And my friends was like, you're DMC. How in the hell could you be depressed? You know, right. first to go gold, first to go platinum, all the stuff that Run DMC did. But to make a long story short, I thought I was going to die. And I called my mother up and I said, yo, mom, people know the DMC story. You could Google us. You could go to Wikipedia. Mm. There's a behind the music on Run DMC. There's three or four books on us. And I said, people know the DMC story, what I did with Running Jay but they don't know the little boy, Daryl, who's just like every little boy and girl. And I think it was my spirit crying out for the real reason I became DMC. So I was writing this book, and I was like, I'm, I was born May 31st, 1964. I'm Daryl McDaniels, but you know me as DMC. And I was like, yo, I know my birthday is May 31st, 1964, but I need a couple of more details about the day I was born. Call my mom, so I'm like, yo, mom, I'm writing this book. I just want to know three things. How much do I weigh? What time I was born? What hospital? She told me those three things. Hung up the phone. I'm getting the information together to, to give to the writer that's helping me to write the book. An hour, an hour goes by, the phone rings. It's my mother again with my father. This is at age 35, over the telephone. I'm an alcoholic, metaphysical, suicidal wreck. They goes, we have something else to tell you. And I go, what? They go, well, you was adopted. You, we brought you when you was two months home, but we love you, bye. You was, no, say, she said you was two months old when we brought you home and you're adopted, but we love you, bye. No way. What was going so, through your mind at that moment? I'm going to really commit suicide now, because now I'm not even my mother's. But the crazy thing was oh a, a, a peace came over me. Mm -hmm. I'm Daryl McDaniels, Hollis, Queens, New York, Byford Banner, Running Jay's my friend, first to go gold, first to go platinum, first to cover MTV, Rolling Stone, and all of that. But I'm also adopted. There was a missing piece of my identity mm -hmm. that I didn't realize was part of my real mission. And then I, I realized that 
being the king of rock was just to set up for what I was supposed to do. I wasn't thrust into politics or religion. I was given hip hop. I was given music, mm -hmm. which breaks, breaks down those walls that mm -hmm. separate it. But more importantly, for all those orphans, for all those kids in foster care, for all those kids in group home, for all those kids incarcerated, I represent this. I don't represent celebrity. I say, don't call me a celebrity. I represent purpose and destiny. I am the living, breathing representation of what happens when you give a kid the opportunity to be the people they were put here to be, regardless of their situations. That's why I'm DMC, the King of Rock. Wow, definitely the King of Rock. Man. That is a statement. My goodness. But this, okay, mm -hmm. well, I want to so, know yeah. the, during Everybody those dark was, years. But, but you know, yeah. what was the breaking point for you? Was there an epiphany moment where you said, "I cannot go on living like this"? You had yes, to pull I was out in of Las darkness? Vegas. At J Jack Daniels and Jim Bean became my best friends. <laughs> really? Co I read they the are, Bible. Those guys are not. Yeah, my cool wife to hang thought I was. With. My wife thought it was crazy. I read the Bible. 10 times from start to finish. Now, the funny joke about the Bible is this. While I you even, were drinking? Or... Yeah, while I was drinking, because I was trying to figure it out. Okay. I even read the part about the making of the ark with cubits and words I can't pronounce. Mm -hmm. But I was like, it must, be, must mean something because it's in here. But to make a long story short, I was in Las Vegas in 2000. In, I was in Las Vegas in 2004. Mm -hmm. And I realized after drinking a fifth of um, Jack, Jim Beam, I can't get no higher. And people, been tr they was trying, and my friends, my family, they was trying to get me in rehab forever, but I was a functional drunk. But, um, you know, I thought about jumping off the roof. When we were, before Jay got shot and killed, Run DMC, we wasn't as popular on TV and radio here, but we was over touring Asia, we was touring Russia and Europe and stuff like that. And I would literally go to the roofs, and I would literally go to the balconies of the hotels and think about jumping, and the funny joke is, I didn't jump because I thought, man, if I jump and don't die, it's going to hurt. So those were one of the reasons that I didn't jump. But okay. I said to myself, something must be wrong with me because I'm thinking I'm suicidal. It wasn't the point that I was upset at my accomplishments here. Mm -hmm. I realized something. And I say this when I speak to kids, when I go speak to colleges everywhere. Success without significance means nothing. Mm -hmm. I was that dude. I thought I had it all. Adidas, my, you know, everything Run DMC did. But then I got to the point where there's got to be something bigger than me yeah. just being a king of rock better than any MC that will ever touch the microphone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And luckily, um, my brother, who's my mother and father's biological son, said, D, don't you know if you never asked those questions, your mother and father would have never told you? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they adopted me. I wasn't officially adopted until I was five years old. But they brought me home at two months, but they kept me. And they gave me something that every kid deserves. Every kid deserves discipline, mm -hmm. love, and instruction. And our relationships with our children is not about flesh and blood. People that I speak to say, man, I wish I was adopted too. It's about what you give a child. Right. You cannot right. look at these children. One of the words that I hate our politicians and um, our <laughs> leaders using is the underprivileged children. If the kids are so underprivileged, give them a privilege. These kids mm -hmm. that's in foster care, these kids that's in a group home, these kids that's in, um, you know, um, incarcerated, when the Felix organization gives them a privilege, and they the, don't just do well, they excel. And the, one of the privileges you give them is Camp Felix. Talk to yes. us about that, because you've sent over a 1,000 kids to Camp Felix over the yes. years. Yes. It's been going on 10 years now. Wow. Mm -hmm. And when me and Sheila Jaffe, um, she's my co-founder partner, um, she, um, she's a casting director. She did a Sopranos, Entourage, oh, yes, the yes. biggest movies yeah. in Hollywood. She's a casting director. When I met her, before I met her, I felt all alone. Even when Running Jay was alive, I, I separated myself from Running Jay because they said this to me, fight for the band is your mother and father. I said, yes, I know that, my mother and father, but do you understand what happened to me? So since they couldn't understand what I was going through, I shut myself out. So me and Sheila said, Daryl, that's no different from the kids now. Because they're foster kids, mm -hmm. because they're adopted, because they have a learning disability, um, because they're homeless, we tend to treat them different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my therapist, I had to go to therapy too. Men should go to therapy, let mm -hmm. me say that. Anyone Men who needs it should go. You should go, yeah. right. But my, my therapist said to me, so you're a foster kid and you're adopted, what makes you any different from any other kid? Mm -hmm. Your circumstances of your existence of how you got there is different. Mm -hmm. But they said, you got people that love you, right? Yeah. yeah, you got desires and term determinations and dreams like every other kid, yeah. yes. So my mother and father gave that to me. Me and Sheila said we need to, at first we wanted to create cities 
in facilities in every state in the United States of America for the foster kids. Our friends, with a little reluctance, convinced us that's a great idea to yeah. you know, start a city like Boys Town and what the Vatican does for the orphans over there. They said, but you need to start a little smaller. So we thought of starting with a camp, a place where kids could come together in the, from the foster care system and see kids that are like them, because they all feel alone. Yeah. As many foster kids there are, what's going on in these households in these different cities, the abuse, um, um, the, the poverty, the crime, the gang banging, the sexual, everything that's going on, even though it's happening on a massive scale, each kid feels alone. I was there. And um, me and Sheila said, let's create a place where not only they could see other kids like them, mm -hmm. but they could see kids who were once like them. You could see the casting director that was a force. You could see the rap guy that was, you could see, but more mm -hmm. importantly, the doctor, the lawyer, the journalist, mm -hmm. such as yourself. Mm -hmm. We want to show the kids possibilities. And when you show, this is to the government too, show the kids the possibilities, but then give all of them, regardless of their situation, the opportunity. Well, you now, are, that's you what of, we do. You talk about giving these kids new beginnings, mm -hmm. but I yes. have to have you take us back to the beginning mm -hmm. of Run DMC. Take us well, back to those early days. Take us back to the days of Def Jam. I mean, we see them in mm -hmm. films, but you right. lived it. This was your life. Well, the whole people don't understand that for us, the old school wasn't a time period. Mm -hmm. It was a consciousness. If you look at the way the world is today, here in America and even overseas, the crime, the poverty, um, um, the obstacles we all face. We created hip hop, and when I say we, it wasn't a record executive, it wasn't a politician, it wasn't a preacher, it was young people. Yeah. The typical MC or rapper or DJ or producer was 12 to 22 years old. Mm -hmm. So we said, what is it that we have, regardless of the conditions that we live in in this world, that is special, that could not only help me, if I help myself, I help my family. If I help my family, I help my neighborhood. If I help my neighborhood, I help my city. See how hip hop grew like mm -hmm. an epidemic? So we said, what is it in us that um, can help us change our conditions? I like poetry, so we wasn't afraid to recite that poetry. I like music. I love jazz, I love rhythm and blues. I got a huge record collection. Yeah. If I didn't have a record collection, my father and my uncle's record collection was mine. Put that poetry with that music. Mm -hmm. Now we created this new art form of expression. Mm -hmm. Now, hip hop was always inclusive. It wasn't that you can't rap a DJ, you ain't down. Mm -hmm. There was kids that said this, man, I can't even read and write. Okay, what is it that you could do? Man, when I hear them rhymes with that beat, I feel like spinning on my head. Mm -hmm. Well, get out there and dance. Mm -hmm. Our whole thing was show what, don't focus on what you don't have. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to show the world the beauty, that beautiful thing that you do have. So Even will we graffiti. be able to see more of the beautiful artwork that you have in your music? Your first solo album came out in 2006. Can we yes, for more? yes, I'm working on a new solo album now that I'm getting ready to call Geek God. Oh, Geek God. I like to greet God. Well, um, I'm getting ready to pull out a graphic novel comic book because mm -hmm. you asked what it was like yeah. when we were growing up. For us as kids, it was comic books. It was Kung Fu movies. Yeah. It was Bruce Lee. Yeah. Remember all of that? Oh, yeah. And that was our whole existence. That's why when you look at the Wu Tang, when yeah. you look at all the rappers, they have this. They have. We have identities and alter right. egos and stuff like that. So what I'm trying to say is, so Geek everything. God, when is that? When does Geek God, God come will out? probably drop uh, probably April of 2015. Do you well, promise to come back? Yes. Because yes, this talk is just more. the first of many conversations. <laughs> yes, definitely. You yes. promise. I promise to all come right. back, and I just want everybody to come to the dance this way thing that we're doing to raise money for the kids. All right. Give us the website. It's the FelixOrganization.org, September 28th at the Cutting Room, the legendary Cutting Room yeah. here in New York City. You can come. We're going to be playing music from the 50s till now. So each generation will have a chance to dance to the music right. and raise money for the kids so we can make sure that every kid becomes the next great me and you. All, All right. right. You rhyme us out of here while we dance, and yes. you make sure you tweet us about your favorite Run DM song at Run, Run DMC, DMC song. <laughs> At a Rise TV 360. All right, it's called here. Gangsta Heart Rock Non Stop Hip Hop. From the corner of the block to the top of the chart. For every race, place, color, country, mm -hmm. county, or creed. And all of the places that I am C. P Boy Banners to the highest degree. And there's no hip hop if it ain't no me. Yeah! <laughs> we'll be right back before Rise Entertainment 360. <laughs>